formation de pilote est pilot training has become very long and complicated. Initially, it begins with a university degree followed by a commercial pilot's training, mainly theoretical, with a practical part thrown in. You don't get the experience to obtain your final license. Next comes a training period that's specific to the Air Force. It's only after around six years that you reach the FA-18 stage with a conversion course that lasts almost a year. Then you go to a tactical training course to become operationally qualified. So you travel a long road before you become operational in an FA-18. There's a long list of exams, simple flights, familiarization, test flights, technical flights, simulated breakdowns with the technical systems disengaged to ensure you're able to operate or land the aircraft without its systems. All this means the pilot has to fly frequently. The machine gives so much and has so many capabilities that will just get better over the next few years. Man really is the weak link in the chain. But that's where all the challenge of the job resides, to be able to work at it and to advance and get to a point where you best manage these systems, getting to know them and getting the most out of them. You have to work really hard. You have to have very specific qualities so that one day you can finally get into the cockpit. And that's what makes people dream, I think.
parle toujours du duo. You always hear people speaking of the duo, man and machine. But with the FA18, you might almost speak of a trio, because the computer is the interface between the man and the machine. This computer unlocks the machine's capacities. Its capacities to climb are phenomenal, almost to the point of defying the laws of physics. The computer link between the man and the aircraft means you can make the machine climb back down whilst flying backwards, stop at high altitude, make it flip over or change direction. The pilot gives the command, the computer calculates how many degrees it takes for the controls to execute the turn. The whole job of the pilot is to push things as far as possible whilst respecting the limits. The pilot must trust his controls and he can be increasingly confident that the information he's receiving is correct. There are two or three controls that indicate the same thing. In managing all this information, cockpit management, you can check that all the information supplied is correct. With these high-tech planes, the systems function so much faster than man, so much information is processed. So the problem lies in how to manage all this data, the sheer quantity of it. Okay, I'll get on with it. I won't. 